G'day and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I wanna show you some techniques that I teach to my patients clinically as a physiotherapist to help fix knots in their upper back. So what I wanna go through in this video is I wanna to touch on an exercise that I find really helpful to help free up those muscular knots in the first place. Another exercise that also helps with those knots but potentially gets to the underlying joint dysfunction as well. We're then gonna to touch on a very simple strength exercise to try and replace some of that muscular tightness and joint stiffness with strength. And then the final point that we're gonna go through is I wanna talk about this in the context of your day-to-day -day postures and shapes to try and give you some examples of why this is actually there in the first place and more importantly why it may not be resolving on its own despite your best efforts thus far. So the first exercise we're going to touch on is a muscular stretching exercise that utilizes what we call a power band or a jump stretch band or a monster band. Essentially it's one of these big thick bands that we tend to see in most gyms. So all you basically need to do with this band <clears throat> is if you take your band and wrap it around something and loop it through something that isn't going to move, all we want to get you to do essentially is coming up underneath the loop so that the loop goes around your wrist and that your hands and fingers can sort of wrap around the top of the band. What we want to do from here is we want to take a big step back before we do anything. So there's a bit of tension pulling this arm away from the shoulder blade and the shoulder blade away from your upper back. Once you've found this position, we can turn your palm up to create a bunch of rotation and stability through your shoulder joint. This allows us to bias around that rib cage and around that shoulder blade area a little bit more because we're essentially locking off this part of the body. What I like to do is in order to keep that there, I like to have my other hand here just to help block that so it doesn't try and unwind. The key with having your hand here is you don't want to grip it too much so that it absorbs some of the tension pulling you open. We just want a little bit of a light pressure and then once you've got your arm straight from this position I'll get you to turn your legs away. This alone may help you find a lot of muscular tightness in between your shoulder blade and your spine but when you're in this position I want to make sure that we can find a little bit of tightness and then what I ask my patients to do is if you lean forward a little bit from your hips it just changes the angle a little bit more so you find a really nice stretch on the inside of that shoulder blade and potentially capturing some of those knots. Now this position on its own can be quite powerful. The constant sort of elastic pull tends to really help open up those muscles, help relieve some of that tension straight away. But to really put this stretch on steroids is that once you've found a position that accesses some of the tightness around that shoulder blade for you, what I'll get you to try and do is try and tense up those tight spots as much as you can. So that may mean tensing everything up, tensing your whole arm up, trying to tense those muscles up at the back of that shoulder blade. You may also need to pull back against the band a little bit just to activate the right muscles. I want to get you to hold this for maybe 10 seconds. As always, this activates the muscle, it gets your brain involved. By tensing up the muscle, it creates this reflex that when you stop tensing the muscle, it tends to reflexively give a little bit. That may mean that you can then bend forwards and twist away a little bit further again before repeating that same process until you stop feeling that you either get sick of it or you stop making change. So once you've had a go at trying to release some of those muscular knots by doing some stretching through that shoulder blade, potentially with a band, the next step behind this is we want to make sure that we get underneath those tight muscular knots so looking for anything that feels stiff tight and restricted from a joint perspective because remember those muscles sit on top of your shoulder blade and anchor onto your rib cage and your spine underneath if those joints have become stiff tight or restricted the muscular tissue above that can start to spasm up to try and protect or support that tissue over time so if you're just trying to mobilize and stretch and massage and, and trigger point those muscular tightnesses away if you're missing that deeper joint stiffness this could be one of the main reasons why those muscular tightnesses and those muscular knots want to keep coming back. So again, as we always go through on the channel, I've found over the years that one of the best ways to mobilize stiff sections of your rib cage and your upper back or any joint in your spine overall tends to be using something as simple as a ball of some sort. But as always, what we want to do is we want to start by basically looking around the inside of your shoulder blade in between the spine in the middle and the shoulder blade, the line of the shoulder blade at the side. We want to place the ball in the middle to start with, then just let the ball roll off to the side a little bit so it's immediately next to the spine and that we want to get you to do as always is we want to get you to gently lie down and you can do this standing up against a wall or sitting up against a wall if it's more preferable for you but essentially all we want to get you to do from here is to find a spot that feels a little bit stiff uh, you can bridge up into this if you need a little bit more tension but to get these muscular knots so if you're going closer to the shoulder blade and hit some really tender uncomfortable areas be very gentle if you're going to trigger point the muscular tissue at the same time but you should be able to find some areas that to you feel stiff tight and potentially tender even though it may not be. So all I want to get you to do is the two options you can try here is as always if you can find a spot that feels stiff take a couple of deep breaths into that 
to try and get your rib cage to move, but also get your brain to feel safe in this position, allow it to free up that tissue a little bit faster, prompt it to do so really quickly. Um, but again, if you need a little bit more pressure, you feel free to arch your bottom up to, to put some more pressure down through the ball that's in that area. But then the other thing we can get you to do is if you have your arm up above your head, we can then take you into a shoulder flex position to try and shear free some of the stiffness in that upper back. And what you should find is, once you find a spot that feels quite stiff and restricted, but then as I gently oscillate in and out of that shape, I feel like my arm starts to go further and further down than it did before. So we're keeping the ball in the same spot, but we're trying to leverage movement of your shoulder and your shoulder blade to shear free some of the stiff joints underneath, but also help release some of the restricted muscular tissue as well. And then all we want to get you to do is just systematically work your way down and then gently work your way slightly closer to that shoulder blade to make sure that you're hitting both the final joints of your thoracic spine and the rib joints as they attach into that thoracic spine. And then what you should hopefully feel once you've done that is not only should it feel instantly a little bit looser and freer to begin with, but you might find some of the discomfort associated with those knots has reduced significantly straight away. But again, if you're not looking below those muscular knots for anything that is stiff, tight or restricted, then you might be missing the hidden underlying cause and the foundation for why those muscular knots are there in the first place. So once you've spent some time trying to release some of those muscular knots themselves, and you've taken a ball or a roller to the joints underneath to mobilize those structures, the ability to free up those areas is one thing. The other things that we need to work on is we need to make sure that we start to build some strength and capacity around those muscles and around that shoulder blade to again, try and replace some of the muscular tightness and stiffness with muscular strength and function. And the stronger we can get these muscles, it can add a little bit of a piece to the puzzle to allow you to stop this from coming back again in the future. So there's obviously a number of different ways that you can strengthen the muscles of your shoulder blades. One of the simplest ones that we have is essentially a banded rowing exercise. So again, all you need potentially is a piece of TheraBand or TheraTubing. You can do this with cables. You can do this in a bent over position if you have some hand weights as well. But all we're trying to get you to do here is to have enough tension on the band. And I like to get my patients to squat a little bit just to get a little bit of core activation at the same time. And then all we're looking for here is to try and pull those shoulder blades back as far as you feel comfortable, paying attention that we're not necessarily trying to pull our hands back towards our trunk as far as we can, because that can facilitate a posture that sort of dumps our shoulder forwards, we really want to prioritize pulling those shoulders back so we end up in a really nice posture, but also try and fatigue those muscles in between the shoulder blades as best as possible. Now, one of the things that some people can do when they do this is because we're trying to pull our arms back as far as possible, it's very easy to feel like you can start to poke your chest out to try and meet your hands before they get there. But we want to make sure that you're dead straight through your trunk with a little bit of a bend in your hips and knees, and making sure that the only thing that's really moving is the shoulders and the shoulder blades as you're pulling those arms back to try and squeeze those shoulder blades together. We want to do enough of these that you feel some fatigue with a resistance that also feels fatiguing for you at about that 10 to 12 rep range. So they come back the next day a little bit stronger and better than ever. And so the final piece of the puzzle that I think is absolutely critical for you to master in order to resolve these muscular knots long term is that we need to understand why those muscle knots are there in the first place. And if you've been a fan of the channel, you understand probably where I'm going to go with this. But clinically, what I find is the most important thing to understand here is that the positions and the shapes that you put your shoulder into day to day can be the single most important reason that helps us understand why those tissues have become tight and knotted up in the first place. And one really interesting experiment that I like to do with my patients clinically is that if you can take a moment to try and understand what you do the most throughout your day to day life and you were to rank them from the thing you do the most commonly to the thing you do the least often. If we start at the most common things that you expose your shoulder to positionally and posturally and work our way down, you should be able to pick up on some things that you didn't realize were acting on your behalf behind the scenes. And the results of this for most people often have us interested in not what you're doing day to day, but how you're positioning your shoulders while you're doing those things the most throughout the day. Now these can be something as simple as how you sit at a desk or how you relax onto the chair, how you drive a car. It can be something as as less obvious as standing, sort of bending over a little bit. But the common theme that tends to pop up when we're having these conversations clinically is there's often a series of shapes that we're into where we tend to get a little bit slouchy and the weight of the arm and the weight of the shoulder essentially anchors into those parts of the upper back. And if given enough time, our brain just adapts to what we ask of it if we ask it often enough. And if we're putting enough tension through that part of our shoulder and our shoulder blade for our brain to realize that it needs to become stiff, tight and restricted, then all of the strength and mobility work we then do to try and counteract that may ultimately be fruitless 
effortless over time if we're not trying to take away the signaling and the and the positioning that might be asking that to be there in the first place. So it's well worth taking a moment to try and think of what shapes and positions you might be putting that shoulder in day to day while you're distracted doing what you need to do day to day to try and understand the bigger picture of why this might be here to ultimately make everything you do more effective. And with that being said, I genuinely hope that was helpful. I hope it was eye-opening and I hope there's a perspective there that you maybe didn't realize beforehand that might start to change the trajectory of how those muscle knots feel over time. If this was helpful, please let me know in the comments down below. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you did find this helpful. Consider leaving a super thanks donation on the video if you want to help support me and the channel going forwards. But again, I sincerely hope that was helpful and informative and I hope to see you next time. Bye.